The deadliest nuclear accident in history, Chernobyl, has left many questions unsolved. Welcome to AWZ. Stay with us to find out about this unfortunate disaster. Don't forget to subscribe to get more of our daily videos. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine, which was originally a part of the Soviet Union, erupted early on April 26, 1986, resulting in what many consider to be the biggest nuclear tragedy the world has ever seen. There are still many unanswered issues about the Chernobyl tragedy even after years of scientific study and government investigation, particularly with regards to the long-term health effects that the large radioactive leak will have on people who were exposed. According to the World Nuclear Association, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant is situated around 12 miles 20 kilometers, south of the Belarusian border and approximately 81 miles 130 kilometers, north of Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. It consists of four reactors that were created and constructed throughout the years of the 1970s and the 1980s. For the purpose of providing cooling water for the reactor, a man-made reservoir around 8.5 square miles, 22 square kilometers, in size and fed by the Pripyat River was built. The 1970-founded city of Pripyat, which was home to about 50,000 people in 1986, was the closest town to the power plant at less than 2 miles, 3 kilometers. Chernobyl, a smaller and older town with a population of roughly 12,000, was about 9 miles, 15 kilometers, distant. The remainder of the area was mostly made up of farmland and forests. The Chernobyl nuclear power station featured four RBMK-1000 nuclear reactors, which are now widely acknowledged to be intrinsically defective. According to the World Nuclear Association, RBMK reactors were pressure tube designs that heated water using enriched U-235 uranium dioxide fuel to produce steam that powered the reactor's turbines and produced electricity. According to the World Nuclear Association, water is typically used in nuclear reactors as a coolant and to remove extra heat and steam, which helps to reduce the reactivity of the nuclear core. However, the RBMK-1000 employed graphite to control the core's reactivity and maintain a steady nuclear reaction. Engineers refer to this positive feedback loop as a positive void coefficient, and it was created when the nuclear core heated and produced additional steam bubbles. According to the UN Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation, the explosion happened on April 26, 1986, during a normal maintenance inspection UNSCR. When operators shut off crucial control systems, they were breaking safety rules because they intended to test the electrical systems. As a result, the reactor's power level dropped to potentially unstable levels. According to the Nuclear Energy Agency, Reactor 4 had been turned off the day before so that safety systems could be maintained in case of power disruptions NEA. Although there is some debate as to what caused the explosion, it is generally accepted that the first explosion was brought on by too much steam, and the second explosion was impacted by hydrogen. The surplus steam was produced when the cooling water was reduced, which led to a buildup of steam in the cooling pipes, the positive void coefficient, which in turn triggered a huge power surge that the operators were unable to control. According to the NEA, the explosions on April 26 at 1.23 am destroyed Reactor 4 and started a massive fire. While a fire spread from the structure holding Reactor 4 to nearby structures, radioactive fuel and reactor parts debris poured over the region. Fission products and the noble gas inventory of naturally occurring odorless and colorless gases were carried by the wind together with toxic pollutants and dust. Two plant employees perished in the blasts, they were the first of many workers to pass away shortly after the catastrophe. The death toll increased as plant workers passed away from acute radiation sickness over the course of the following few days as emergency personnel fought valiantly to put out the fires and stop radioactive leakage. According to the NEA, the original fire was put out by 5 am, but the subsequent graphite-fueled fire required 10 days and 250 firefighters to put out. 
However, for an additional 10 days, harmful pollutants were still being released into the environment. Iodine-131, cesium-134, and cesium-137 fission products made up the majority of the radiation discharged by the failing nuclear reactor. According to UNSCAR, iodine-131 has a half-life of only 8 days, yet it is quickly inhaled through the air and has a tendency to concentrate in the thyroid gland. Cesium isotopes are a problem for many years after they are released into the environment because they have longer half-lives, cesium-137 has a half-life of 30 years. About 36 hours after the tragedy, on April 27, Pripyat began to be evacuated. By then, many locals had already begun to experience symptoms of radiation illness, including nausea, headaches, and vomiting. By May 14, the plant surrounding 18-mile area had been sealed off, forcing an additional 116,000 inhabitants to leave. The World Nuclear Association estimates that 220,000 more residents were given the go-ahead to relocate within the following few years. According to the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission NRC, 28 workers at Chernobyl perished in the first four months after the catastrophe, including several brave employees who knew they were exposing themselves to lethal radiation levels in order to protect the station from additional radioactive releases. The radioactive plume primarily moved northwest toward Belarus due to the south and easterly direction of the dominant winds at the time of the event. Even nevertheless, the Soviet government took some time to inform the outside world of the disaster's full scope. According to the United Nations, however, when radiation levels became a concern in Sweden about three days later, scientists there were able to determine the general location of the nuclear disaster based on radiation levels and wind directions. This forced Soviet authorities to disclose the full extent of the crisis. According to the NRC, a total of 31 persons passed away due to radiation exposure or other direct consequences of the event within three months of the Chernobyl accident. According to a 2018 UNSCR analysis, up to 20,000 people who were under the age of 18 in 1986 had their thyroid cancer detected between 1991 and 2015. The known overall rate of cancer fatalities and other health problems directly attributable to Chernobyl's radioactive leak is lower than was previously predicted, even though emergency personnel, evacuees, and residents may still experience further occurrences of cancer over the course of their lifetimes. According to a report by the NRC, the bulk of the 5 million persons residing in polluted areas, received relatively tiny radiation doses comparable to natural background levels, 0.1 rem per year. Today's research, with the exception of thyroid cancer, does not conclusively link the accident to radiation-induced increases in leukemia or other solid cancers. According to some analysts, the unfounded fear of radiation exposure caused more pain than the actual calamity. For instance, despite the fact that the actual level of radiation exposure these women experienced was probably too low to have any negative effects, many doctors in Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union advised pregnant women to have abortions in order to prevent having children with birth defects or other disorders. According to the head of UNSCAR, the United Nations released a study on the impacts of the Chernobyl accident in 2000 that was, full of unsupported conclusions that have no validity in scientific assessments, leading to its eventual rejection by the majority of authorities. Despite the risks, numerous people went home soon after the catastrophe, some of them even told their story to news organizations including the BBC, CNN, and The Guardian. And in 2011, Ukraine allowed those who wanted to view the disaster's impact first-hand access to the area. According to National Geographic, the area, including the exclusion zone, is now home to a diversity of wildlife that has survived without human meddling. In the deep woodlands that currently surround the silent power station, thriving populations of wolves, deer, lynx, beaver, eagles, boar, elk, bears, and other creatures have been observed. Nevertheless, a small number of radiation consequences are known to exist, including animals with high levels of cesium-137 in their bodies and trees that grow stunted in the radiation zone. Russian forces left the plant on March 31, according to an announcement made by Ukraine's National Nuclear Corporation Energodom, taking some of the station's Ukrainian security guards with them. Following a failed attempt to seize the adjacent Ukrainian capital of Kiev, 
Russian troops withdrew from the area. The other hostages, who had been made to do plant maintenance under duress, were set free. Additionally, according to Energodom, Russian troops excavated several trenches in the radioactively contaminated soil of the Red Forest, which sparked unfounded rumors that some of the invaders developed radiation sickness. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to share and click on the notification button for more of our amazing videos. Woo!